All through the passage of time, women have always been perceived as the weaker vessel and so have been subjugated and oppressed by culture in most African societies. The culture is defined by inequality and the subjugation of the female folks. Gender-based violence, including rape, domestic violence, and other sexual abuses have assumed serious dimension globally. In Nigeria, incidents of rape are fast assuming a threatening dimension that requires urgent intervention. Rape, like other forms of violence against women, is an infringement on women's rights, privacy, self-preservation, and dignity. Reports have revealed that rape issues have become a serious social problem of epidemic proportion and no longer an isolated criminal act, affecting just a few women in the society. In recent times, the incidents of rape have increased at an alarming rate in Africa and also in Nigeria. There are little or no policy or law that helps protect the victims as they are blamed, stigmatized and humiliated by the public when brought to the public domain. A lot of people interrogate the dynamics, social psychological, institutional, social economic and cultural factors accentuating cases of rape on both the victims and the perpetrators of these heinous criminal acts with recommendations on ways and means of tackling this social menace. Rape is not an abstract issue as it has unveiled its ugly marks in every society. And how do we describe the brutal nature of this masquerade in Africa, especially in Nigeria? A lot of questions have been running through the minds of citizens on what it is about our societies that make the female gender vulnerable to all sorts of abuses, particularly in the case of rape. What could have triggered the increase in recent times? What could have caused perpetrators to sexually assault their victims? These questions are not easily answered because in rape cases, questions are easily asked, but answers are much more difficult and inconvenient to answer. The closest thing to an answer is the close shoulder, the emotional reaction that one receives when the issue is mentioned. It is so worrisome that um uh, rape and violence against women has become very worrisome. The incident is increasing on a daily basis. I think this is because uh, moral, there's so much immorality in the system. Our young men and our children are no more being given the moral uh, training that they, they desire. Our parents are expected to train their, their sons and daughters as how to relate with one another, how to respect one another, and how to obey, above all, to obey the commandments of God and the law of the land. But parents are too busy chasing money, and as such, they don't really have the time to get closer to their children and train their children and parents are the first teachers that the children are exposed to. Most of these parents are even the one committing the crime. So if they are committing this crime in the presence of their children, you can, what could be worse than a father raped the daughter? What could be worse? And the sons are watching. The sons are seeing. I mean, it's a very, it's a very worrisome situation. But it's more worrisome now that death is involved. After raping the girls, they kill them all over the whole place. I'm yet to, I'm yet to, to be in terms with my, my mind that I hope they are not being used for rituals. Otherwise, you have already injured the girl, you have already hurt the girl. And you kill the girl in addition. So there must be something extra that they want to achieve by going to the extent of killing. In the past, a case of rape in any community, that boy who committed that crime, and even the family, are excommunicated in that community. They are treated like slaves. They are treated like lepers. So for that reason, nobody wants to do it again. But today, 
it's just taken as if uh, as if uh, no no serious crime has taken place and the reason for that is that the government had failed its people there are laws we have the child right law that was passed in 2008 till today it has not been implemented as the federal government aims to curb all kinds of criminal activities that have bogged down Nigerians' development and also projects her before the Committee of Nations as endemically insecure, rape is one crime that should get its serious attention. The rising incidents of rape in the country, especially minors, have reached an alarming rate. It is such that day after day, reports of sexual assault of the Nigerian child, both male and female, female are awash in both the traditional and new media. Although findings show that many cases of rape go unreported in the country. Trending reports indicate that this heinous crime is now common in worship places, schools and even homes are some anointed men of God, teachers, caregivers and even parents or guardians have been accused of defiling people they should ordinarily protect stating some cases that have sparked all protests in recent time and kept people wondering is that of Vera Owaila Omozoa, a 22-year-old microbiology student of the University of Benin who was raped and killed in a church, who assault the quietness of her empty church in Benin City, southern Nigeria as a place to study. Just a few days after, Grace Oshago, a 21-year-old female national diploma student of business administration at the OK Ogun Polytechnic, Saki, Oyo State, was also raped and killed in a church mission building in Ibadan. The incident happened at Idiori area, Shasha, off Express Way. The causes of rape, as far as I'm concerned, uh, has to do with the inclination of the individual to want to engage in a, a, a crime that has to do with the opposite sex. And uh, some people have said indecent dressing could be responsible and uh, some have said that uh, maybe there are mental health issues. Uh, I, I would agree that there are mental health issues in, involved. I also agree that uh, there, there are economic issues involved. I also agree, I will also posit that uh, lack of proper education, a, 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 a educational system that has been aborted can lead to frustration and uh, things like that. But there is never an excuse uh, for such an act. Uh, then again, I believe that uh, much as we encourage our guests to dress properly, but it's not an excuse. For instance, in the cases already mentioned, the recent cases, these young ladies, I think they were indecently dressed from the evidence we have gathered. So you can, you can see that uh, it doesn't uh, uh, come down to whether or not the young lady was uh, properly or, or exposed in the way she was dressed. Across the country, so there is issue of underdevelopment, poor electricity, lack of electricity. Sometimes in, in the house you don't have electricity even to, to, to read at night. People have to devise other ways of, you know, to, to generate uh, electricity for themselves or light for themselves and all of that. So, there is widespread underdevelopment in the country that in itself is responsible. The other has to do with the near collapse of our value system, the moral decadence in the society, and that has to also do with uh, uh, the, the parenting. How do children, how, how do parents raise their children? I mean, there are so many parents today who do not keep track of their children's movement. They don't know where their children are at any given time. And there are some that whatever excuse the child gives for leaving home, you know. And then what about the dress, the dress code, the dress, dressing for young persons? Some draw dress very provocatively. But again, that's not, that, that, that's not an excuse for anyone to be involved in that uh, rape. And what is the fact that those who perpetrate recent cases were hearing is that they do not only rape, they also kill their victim. Um, if you look at rape cases, like of recent, it has been on the increase. But if you look at the youth generally, I know as a university lecturer, we talk about it every day. Because the rate of drug abuse could lead to cases of persons, one or two persons, acting strangely 
Because for somebody to just pounce on a girl, a may pouncing on a girl without agreement, and there is forceful engagement of the other sex, then it's something most time that does not just come out of normalcy. So there's something wrong. So we must look at drug abuse as one of the factors that may result to cases of rape. Then two, we must look at our dress code, mostly the female. The rate the thing is going, you see father having having affairs with the, with the, with the children, you see a pregnant woman being raped and killed. So we are not happy about it at all. The thing is getting too much. Our children are going to school now, we are afraid. Most mothers are not, are, are not safe with their children because they are afraid. What is peculiar about the Bible days and our days is that rape has been condemnable. It's condemned on all sides. In the Bible days it was condemned, in our world it's condemned. My pain on this siege of rape in Africa is that it's increasing, it's not abating. When you go to the uh, Western world, to the developed world, rape is coming down. The rape you have in the advanced world is the rape of sex without consent. Not the one of gang raping, strangling to death like we have of the wildlife in those states. What are the causes of rape? One for me is um, uncontrolled sexual urge or lust. Number two is inadequate advocacy and sensitization. In Nigeria, we have never been so strong advocating against rape. Drugs and alcoholic influence. People who engage in taking drugs, who are drunk, sometimes engage in this. The fourth one is peer's influence. Statistics released by Data Board Nigeria in July 2018 showed that in 2017, a total of 2,278 cases of rape were recorded in the country. Lagos State alone accounted for over 19.35% of rape in Nigeria, with 441 reported cases. Kano State recorded 237 cases. Federal Capital Territory, FCT, Abuja, recorded 132. Abia State recorded 98 cases, while Bruno State recorded 97 cases. According to the firm, these five states alone accounted for almost half of the total rape cases in the country in 2017. The states with the lowest rape cases recorded were Kogi with 11 cases, Edo with 10 cases, Rivers with 5 cases, Castina and Oshun with 2 cases each. It's however concluded that rape incidents have been consistently on the rise in Nigeria. Sexual assaults occurs commonly worldwide and is particularly pervasive in the developing world. The background to sexual violence is important in the understanding of the ramifications of the problem. Some elements that offer the means to the prevention of sexual assault in the community are important highlights, especially where the means expertise and facilities of managing cases of sexual assault is grossly inadequate. Girls that have been raped today, some of their parents, they have contributed to this raping of a team. Beyond today, you will see some parents will tell their daughter, you need to be dressing sexy, sexy. Today, they have raped them. The family must be blamed. Parental care. Because most families don't have time for their children. This, pre this present generation, they don't have time. And if you look at the government today, because don't expect crime rates to reduce, or rapists or assassins or whatever you may call it, to reduce without having steady power supply. Because evil thrive in darkness. And the cheapest way to deal with darkness is what? Light. And any country that imbibes the culture of let there be light first. I tell you the truth, that country, we develop crime rate will reduce if we trace the causes of rape today you will discover that number one is indecent dressing of the female folk we cannot only take cognizance of or to take judicial notice of the decent dressing of female folk but what about those that are that the underage that are raped. I don't think it has anything to do with uh, indecent dressing. You know, if, it is, if that is true, 
what would the man be doing raping the child of uh, seven months? What indecent uh, addressing would anybody, you know, adduce to that? You know, it's, it's just sickness, you know, people, the people are sick. And uh, the earliest time we realize that it is, it, is, it is not a natural thing, the better for everybody. If one posits that sexual assault can be prevented, certain responsibilities are imperative. Some challenges must be anticipated and special needs, circumstances should be catered for. It is important to understand the ramification of sexual assault as not only a physical act but also could be verbal or visual sexual abuse or any act that forces a person to join in unwanted sexual contact or attention. Sexual assault is also not discriminatory to sex. Both males and females are affected but studies have shown that the number of female sexual assault victims and assault perpetrated by males is far greater than male victims. Studies have also documented female offenders of sexual assault whose victims may be of male or female gender, including children, adolescents, and adults. The motivation for the female offender being the same as that of their male counterparts, power and control. It could be that disbelieved attitude by the society and even of health professionals to the occurrence of male sexual assault and the unlikelihood of the male victims themselves to disclose sexual abuse made the subject and research into male sexual assault to lag behind that of the female. It can be inferred that sexual assault, like other medical, social or illegal anomalies, could be amicable to preventive measures. Caroline Okonji reporting. <laughs>